I think we ate at every specialty restaurant on board Sun Princess. So overall, what was the food and dining like? Does it live up to the hype? Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Report. This is the dining and food review of our recent cruise aboard Sun Princess. This is the one everybody's been waiting for because everybody wants to know about food, right? Everybody loves to eat. Let me preface this by saying a couple of things. First of all, let me bring you up to date from my last video where I said uh, in my review video, and by the way, if you haven't seen my full review of Sun Princess, I'll put a link to it up in the corner of this video and in the description of the video. So make sure you check it out if you're interested. In my last video, I mentioned that I had not yet received my folio from Princess and I had some refundable shipboard credit, but I, I didn't have any printed evidence of that. Uh, I do want to let everybody know it took about three and a half weeks, but I did get my folio by email. And yesterday I actually did get a check in the mail from Princess for that uh, shipboard credit, that refundable shipboard credit. So good on Princess. Thank you. Everybody said it would come. Everybody said I, I was worried for nothing. I also want to preface this video by saying that anytime you review food and dining, whether it's on land or on a cruise ship, it is extremely subjective. It is the hardest thing to review because everybody has different tastes. I may love something that you find disgusting. Uh, you know, I may hate something or not had a good experience and you think it's the best experience you've ever had. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go venue by venue. <clears throat> First, I'm going to talk about the included dining, the dining that anybody can have access to at no additional charge. It's all part of your uh, normal price you pay to be on the ship. And I'm going to go through those and I'm going to kind of just give you our honest opinion. I'm going to tell you the way we see it. And if you've been on Sun Princess and you had a different experience, please share those experiences in the comments down below. OK, let's start out with the eatery. Now, the eatery is Sun Princess's ship's buffet. It's like the main buffet, what you would normally call a Lido buffet, but it's not on the Lido deck. It's on deck nine. Very large cafeteria style. Um, I was hoping, I think in my mind, I guess I was hoping it was going to be a little bit more along the lines of what we, what we experienced on Virgin Voyages, uh, but it wasn't. It, it was basically almost like what we've experienced on other princess ships, except that the crew members do serve you the food. Now, there are several stations. There are several places where you can simply lift up a little door and you can grab something like, I don't know, a piece of cake or some bread or some hummus. They have all different kinds of things like sandwiches and things already pre-made on plates and you just kind of grab and go. The problem with the eatery is what it has always been on Princess and that is the lines. It's just huge lines. And if you want something in the fourth station, it's all one big long line. Uh, you never know if you're supposed to get at the very end of the line and go through all the stations where they don't have anything you want. Or are you just supposed to cut in and get something you want? It's just, it's it's a little bit stressful the way that, that the traffic is managed in the eatery. So we kind of started avoiding it just because it was so crowded. Uh, very chaotic, long lines of people waiting to get food. Now we did go at some different times and if you went at certain times, 
like right when they open. I mean, right when they open, you could avoid some of the lines. They, in my opinion, they have way too many tables for four and they're big tables. These are huge tables. Even for four people, they're huge tables. And it takes up a lot of space in the dining room. So what that means is if you've got two people sitting at one of those tables for four, well, you've just wiped out two seats that unless you want to join somebody. But, you know, Ricky and I like to eat by ourselves. We don't want to just sit down with strangers. I personally feel like the tables could be smaller or they could have more two top tables. You could always put two tables, two, two top tables next to each other. If four of you want to eat together, you can always do that. But when you've got this huge four top table, there's nothing you can do with it. And a lot of times, since there's very few places very few tables, you might see one person sitting at a four top table, taking up the whole table. And it, I don't know, it just, it did not seem very well designed from the perspective of traffic and tables. The other issue is they now have a promenade on each side of the ship, just outside of the eatery and they have outdoor seating. What does that do? That takes up space from the indoor seating, maybe a third of the space that you would normally have to sit and eat on the buffet or at the buffet. You either have to go outside to eat, which it was also crowded. We had pretty good weather on our cruise, but the outside and the inside were crowded. If you want to eat outside, it's it's nice, but sometimes it's very windy. That promenade dining, like I say, it's probably taken up a third of the dining space at least. That brings me to another issue that I failed to mention in my last video. This is really a ship that's designed for warm weather. Uh, and, and that's evidence of it right there. You're not going to go sit outside on that promenade and eat in Alaska in 40 degree or 50 degree weather when it's raining. You're just probably not going to want to do it. And what that's going to do is that's going to make the inside of the ship even more crowded and less likely to find a place to sit. There were a couple of times that Ricky and I went through the buffet. We And we're not big buffet eaters anyway, but we went through the buffet because it was quick, it was easy, and we walked all through the dining room, all the way around to the back, to the to the very aft section back where uh, the butcher block and uh, the catch by Rudy is at night. And there were no there were no tables. Nothing was available. As far as the food, um, honestly, I didn't have anything at the eatery that I felt like was memorable. They did have a stir fry station. I didn't try it because the line there was always so long. I just didn't want to wait in line for it. And we're not big on buffet food anyway. I had a couple of dishes on the buffet that were okay. Typical princess buffet food, nothing out of the ordinary. And I don't mean that to be insulting to princess, okay? It's just what it is. Now, as far as the promenade grill, outside on the promenade on port side. I'm going to get this wrong. I think on the port side they have pizza and on the starboard side they have burgers, fries, you know, sam you know, chicken sandwiches, things like that, hot dogs. I tried a burger. Not good. Just not good. Sorry. Not good. And they and they made it fresh. I mean, I watched her make the burger. It just it just, the meat wasn't good, the bun was okay, but nah, just nothing good. Now, the French fries were good. When the French fries are fresh, and, and Ricky would order fries, and she asked them to make her a fresh, hot order, and they did, they were good. Now, on the, I believe it is the starboard side, Promenade Pizza. There is a pizza place. The pizza on the Promenade, in my opinion, was amazing. It was some of the best pizza at sea I've ever had. I think better than Alfredo's, personally, for me. There was an Italian gentleman doing it. You could tell he loved what he was doing. I talked to him about it. He said he's been making pizza with his grandfather since he was a little kid. 
And you could tell. You could tell he loved what he was doing. It wasn't just a job for him. He had a passion for pizza. And the pizza was, I thought the pizza was incredible. It was very, the crust was, oh man, it, it, I, I would literally drive three miles in town to go get a pizza like that. It was that good. Now, what about the main dining room? The main dining room is on three levels, six, seven, and eight. And the first night we had dinner at the MDR, and I believe that was the only time we had dinner at the MDR. MDR, typical MDR, nothing special, just okay. Um, seemed understaffed. They seemed a little, uh, it was slow. Service was slow. It was good, very nice. You know, crew members, very nice. Wait staff, very nice. It was much better for breakfast than it was for, for dinner. I, well, I don't think we tried it for lunch. I don't believe we ever had lunch in the MDR, but we did have breakfast there three or four times, and we did have dinner there the first night, and the dinner was just okay. It, was, it, was, it wasn't bad. It was just okay. It, I think it was what you would expect from a main dining room. On deck six and seven, you've got the Horizons dining room, and on deck eight, you have what they call the American diner. Now, this is all going to change, and that's another topic we're going to talk about. A lot of these locations and restaurants and names and everything are going to change since we were on the ship. We were on the transatlantic and back and as soon as the ship got to the United States in October, they've moved stuff around. Okay, so it, when we were on the ship, American Diner was on deck eight and it was average. Okay, average. I love the menu. Uh, it was a it was a good news bad news. I had the pork ribs. I thought they were very good. I thought the pork ribs were really good. I also tried the nachos. I thought the nachos were pretty good. Ricky had the country fried steak, and it was so tough you couldn't chew it. You couldn't even cut it with a knife. It was that tough. And the as soon as you cut into it, all the breading just fell off. It was not good. She did order a side order of mashed potatoes, and the mashed potatoes were really good. <laughs> but the, uh, yeah, it just, uh, that was our experience. It just kind of, mm, I don't know. You tell me what you think. If you've been on Sun Princess, what is your experience at American Diner? Now, what about the Lido deck up by the pool on 17? There are a variety of dining options. You've got tacos. You have in, in, in the taco bar, they also have shawarma. I did try the shawarma. I did not try the tacos. I'm not a big taco guy. Um, they do have a burgers. I suspect it's similar to the promenade burger, but I can't verify that. Ricky tried a hot dog, and she was not impressed. They also have pizza up on 17. And it's different. It's a different style pizza than what they have down on the promenade deck. This is a more of a thin crust New York style pizza. And I thought it was very good. I, I even actually kind of preferred it over Alfredo's. I know. And nobody's going to believe this because everybody raves about Alfredo's. I'm going to talk about Alfredo's. They also have a salad bar area up at the Lido deck. And we did not try it, but it looked really good. Everything looked very fresh. It, it looked good. If you've eaten at the salad bar up there, uh, let me know in the comments down below. So we're going to talk a little bit for a second about ice cream because you have a couple of options. You have a gelateria on deck seven, kind of right across from Princess Live. And the gelato is excellent. It's very good. And if you have the premium package like we did, it's all included. So you can get one scoop, two scoop, three scoop, ten scoops if you, if you want to sit there and eat it. And it was excellent. They had about five or six flavors. Very, very good gelato. Now up on deck 17, they've got the premium desserts, which are at Coffee and Cones on deck 17. And these are kind of in a tall parfait glass with, you know, chocolate. They've been kind of put some melted chocolate on it. And I'm telling you, I had two or three of them. I thought they were excellent. Now those desserts are expensive. Those premium desserts are like $17. They're not worth $17. 
again, we had the premium package and they were all included. So that's a pretty good value. I'd say they're worth $8 or $10, but they're not worth $17. The International Cafe on Sun Princess is located on Deck 9 Midship at the top of the piazza. As on other Princess ships, the International Cafe is open 24 hours a day, offering a full barista coffee service, morning pastries, and afternoon, evening, and late night sandwiches and snacks. There's also a full bar service at the International Cafe. The semicircular design of the International Cafe presents some challenges by making it difficult to know where to place your order. Food is ordered in one place while coffee and drinks are ordered in another. There's a wide variety of pastries and snacks on offer here. Some are served cold and others can be heated up for you and served warm. I did try a couple of pastries which I thought were good. However, Ricky was not impressed with the double chocolate chip cookies, claiming they just weren't sweet. The banana bread, on the other hand, was quite good. The lines for coffee can get very long here in the mornings, and there's very limited seating. Personally, I found coffee currents on deck 7 to be a better spot for my morning coffee. Okay, now they also have casual dining options, and there's two I can think of off the top of my head, and that's Alfredo's Pizza. Everybody, if you've been on Princess, you're probably familiar with Alfredo's Pizza. And a lot of people swear by it. They say it's the best pizza at sea. Our attitude has always been that it was just okay, but it wasn't as good as everybody said it was. Now, what they did have at Alfredo's that was very good, they have a very good charcuterie plate. I thought the anti, I'm sorry, not charcuterie, anti, anti pasti, which is kind of the same thing. Uh, good, you know, salamis and cheeses and olives and things like that. That was excellent. Very good. And Ricky had a really good salad there at Alfredo's. But we went one day. It was super, super crowded. We had to get one of the little beepers and wait for a table to open up. Um, again, we had the premium package. And the premium package is promoted as you have unlimited specialty dining and unlimited casual dining. So unlimited doesn't mean unlimited like I think of unlimited. Unlimited means you can go as many times as you want to go. It doesn't mean you can order anything you want on the menu. And even if you are not on the premium package, it's $14.99 to eat at Alfredo's. But even then, you don't. it's not unlimited. There are certain pizzas, there's these specialty pizzas that you pay extra for. They're like $12. Uh, and if you get the $14.99 package, which is basically what you're getting if you have the premium package, you get that $14.99 offer opportunity. You get a salad or antipasti. You get a pizza and a dessert. You can have one of each. I wanted to try one of these specialty pizzas. I just assumed that came with a specialty package, but as soon as we were seated, our waitress told us, no, that's not included in the premium package. That's extra. And it's not just extra. You pay the full $12 price or $12.99 or whatever the price was. You pay the full price. So you get no benefit for being a premium member if you want one of those specialty pizzas. And I told uh, the waiter when I placed the order, said, I don't care if it's extra, I'll pay the $12. That's the pizza I want. Ricky got one of their included, I guess, included pizzas. I thought the pizza was good. It was very soggy. The, the crust was soggy. It was not crisp. It just was not as good as what we got out at the promenade. That was the best pizza on the ship, in my opinion. And it was okay. It was very, very slow. Our order took about 30 or 45 minutes to get to us. Uh, to their credit, the manager came over and apologized for it taking so long. And he said, we're not going to charge you for that specialty pizza because you waited so long. So that was nice. I appreciated that. I think that's what they should do. The other casual dining venue is O'Malley's Pub. This place is always packed. It is always packed. In fact, I understand that on Star Princess, they're going to add some more tables. So it's going to be a bigger space, I assume. Uh, this is an a la carte menu. You go in, you order what you want, and you just pay so much. I think the hamburger that I had was $10. Uh, 
Uh, we ordered onion rings. I think the onion rings are five or six dollars. Now we had again the premier package, so it was included. And this was unlimited. You could eat in O'Malley's as much as you wanted. You can order anything you wanted. The onion rings were very good. They were very, very understaffed. It was it, the service was very slow. We got this in several different places. As far as the food quality. My cheeseburger at O'Malley's was the best cheeseburger I've had on the ship. It was definitely a step above anything I had anywhere else. Yeah, I think it was a $10 burger, and I think it's probably worth it. It's probably worth $10. It was that good. The fish and chips, Ricky had the fish and chips. They were just okay. A big piece of fish. Yeah, the, the fries were cold. I think it's just because they were so busy. The food probably sat back in the kitchen before they brought it out to us, and, and, and everything got got out cold. I tried the scotch egg, and I guess it's just an acquired taste. I didn't care for it. I thought it was had kind of a strange, the sausage just had a strange taste to me. I've never had a scotch egg. Let's talk about specialty dining. We did a lot of specialty dining on this ship. First thing I'm going to talk about is Makoto Kai Sushi at Makoto. I think that's what the Makoto Ocean or Kai Sushi. I'm not sure what you call it. The names to me get a little confusing. Very, very good service. The manager there was excellent. Natalia, super nice. We've got the premium package. They've got a beautiful menu. They've got this big menu on the left-hand side. They've got all these a la carte items, you know, sushi rolls and sashimi and edamame and all kinds of things. On the right-hand side, it's like a price fix menu. It's like a, a tasting menu like eight course menu. It's $45 per person to eat. I think that means if you want the tasting menu. I don't think you have to pay the 45. In fact, I know you don't. You don't have to pay the $45, I don't think. I don't think you have to pay the $45 if you eat on the a la carte menu. It's, it's there again. It's still, I still don't know. We were on board the ship for over two weeks. But here's the catch. Again, unlimited specialty dining. And they say that Kai Sushi is included in that. Well, only the right-hand side of the menu is included. In other words, Ricky and I can't go in and just order a couple of sushi rolls, which is really all we wanted. We just I wanted a spicy tuna roll. She wanted a shrimp tempura roll, maybe some edamame. We'd have been happy. Nope, that's not included on the premium package. you got to pay extra for that. And their sushi rolls are $17. Come on. I've never paid $17 for a sushi roll anywhere. And I've been to a lot of sushi restaurants. We did go back. We did go and we did the eight course tasting menu. And it was very ambitious. It was very things that you we're not used to eating. It was a little for somebody that really loves sushi, you you know, like barbecued eel sashimi, which I'm not a big sashimi fan. I'll eat it, but I'm not a big sashimi fan. There were no sushi rolls. There was a salmon tartare. So it was it was a very it was very good. Don't get me wrong. It was excellent. If you love sushi and you love this kind of a experience, you're going to love it. I mean, it, it and it was probably worth $45. We did go back on a second vis uh, visit because we had some shipboard credit anyway. So we thought, well, we'll go back and we'll just have a couple of sushi rolls, which is what we wanted to begin with. So on the second visit, we had the sushi rolls. Like I say, they were like $17 each. They were good. They weren't that good. They weren't $17 good, but they were good. We had a, a little chicken, uh, like a grilled teriyaki chicken dish. It was It was very good, very nice. The way they promote it to premier guests is a little, a little deceptive because when we went there, we thought we could order on the left side of the menu. And maybe if we ordered two $17 sushi rolls, in other words, we were figuring our value is $45 per person. And maybe they would just, whatever we ordered, they would take that amount off of that total, that $90 total. And once we got over the $90 total, they'd start charging us for stuff, but it doesn't work that way. I don't know. You tell me in the comments down below. When they said unlimited specialty dining, I didn't know it meant you can go as many times as you want. Now what about Umai Teppanyaki? Again, it's $45 per person. If you have the premium package, it's included. 
and it is unlimited. You can go as many times as you want. And with a couple of exceptions, just a couple of like Wagyu beef, maybe you have to pay a little upcharge for. But you can order pretty much anything you want. The food was good. Uh, it was very, very noisy. Take me home. very noisy. There were four tables going at the same time, four chefs in relatively close proximity. And they're singing and yelling and everybody, all the crowd is yelling, everybody's excited. Uh, so you need to be in, a, in the right kind of mood to go. It's very entertaining. And it felt just a little bit rushed. The service, again, they felt like they were understaffed. Even the manager was having to clear uh, plates off the tables because they're just in, it took forever to get a drink order. Let me know in the comments down below, have you been to Umay Teppanyaki? What was your experience? Did you get that same sense? Now, right in that same restaurant is the Umay Hot Pot. And this is a very different experience. They kind of have this big pot of broth, two different broths, flavors of broth, and they bring out all these different raw meats and vegetables and seafood, and you cook them in the broth. Think of it kind of like an Asian version of fondue, but instead of cooking things in hot oil, you're cooking them in a boiling broth. I actually thought the food was very good. I thought it was very good. It's a little clumsy because you're having to reach over and get tongs and put food in the broth and get food out. It, it, it can get a little clunky. But overall, I thought it was a good experience. We actually went back a second time. We thought the food was good. The downside to Umay Hot Pot is it is so damn noisy because of all the teppanyaki people. They're all screaming right next to you. <laughs> So if you don't mind a noisy, and I'm talking noisy, if you don't mind a noisy environment, then you're probably going to love Umay Hot Pot and Umay Teppanyaki. Okay, let's go on to Crown Grill. Now, Crown Grill is Princess's Steakhouse. And I thought Crown Grill was very good. And so did Ricky. Our steaks were good. They were cooked perfectly. The first night, I went twice. The first night, uh, I had the ribeye. Excellent, tender. I love the fact they serve it with the different salts. I mentioned that we went to Crown Grill twice, and on both occasions, I ordered the ribeye. However, on our second visit, which was the very last night of the cruise, I'm pretty sure they brought me a New York strip instead of a ribeye. And when I asked the waiter about it, he defended it and said, no, it was a ribeye. But I'm pretty familiar with steak and different cuts, and I'm almost positive it was a New York strip. Ricky had the blue iceberg salad. Excellent. I had the Caesar salad, which was also excellent. I had the lump crab cake, which was very good. Ricky had the shrimp cocktail, which was also very good. And for her main course, Ricky had the black and blue onion soup, which she claimed was amazing. They, they just do a, a good job. Good service. They did not feel understaffed there. They, I thought the service at Crown Grill, Grill was good. What I don't like about Crown Grill is that there's no bar you can go to before to have a nice quiet drink before you go have your nice dinner. Good steak, good service, good value. Vegetables were good. Bread is excellent. The bread is excellent. Nothing bad to say about Crown Grill. I We ate there twice. It was We don't go back to a place twice unless we really like it. So uh, good high marks for Crown Grill. And it's part of the Premier Package. It's $45 per person. If you're not on the Premier Package, and it's uh, you can go as many times as you want on the Premier Package. Now, let's talk about the other steak place on board, the Butcher Block by Dario. We were disappointed when we got on board the ship to find out that the Butcher Block was closed for the whole cruise for all seven, ended up 18 days. And that was something I was really looking forward to because I'm a big meat eater. I wanted to try this. I thought it, I was intrigued by the idea of this Butcher Block. And I think they've probably reopened it now. They're going to move it to a new venue. Probably a good idea. Um, however, we did talk to several people during this 18 nights, several people that had been on Sun Princess before 
on an earlier cruise, they had eaten at the Butcher Block by Dario, and we didn't talk to one person that was impressed. They all made it sound like it was just average at best. So I'm actually kind of glad. I'm glad, glad we went to the Crown Grill instead. And that brings me to a princess favorite, which we've eaten at on every princess ship we've ever sailed on, and that is Sabatini's. Now, Sabatini's is their Italian Trattoria restaurant on board Sun Princess. And I think not only is it one of the prettiest restaurants on board the ship, it really surprised us. We have had mixed reviews in the past on Sabatini's. Sometimes it was good, not great, but good. Uh, on other cruises, it was just average. On this cruise, they hit it out of the park. It was one of our best, if not the best, dining experience of the entire cruise. It was excellent. That's why we went back twice. Great, nice, hospitable manager, great wait staff, excellent service, wonderful drinks. The best, the best meal of the cruise is what I had at Sabatini's, and I had it twice, and that was the lamb chops. If you like lamb, you're going to love the lamb chops at Sabatini's. It's a good portion, perfectly cooked, nicely seasoned, just delicious. Probably the best antipasti plate I've ever had on a cruise ship, and maybe even anywhere. Lasagna is to die for. If you like, Ricky doesn't even like lasagna, and I think she ate all of hers. The arancini was good. Uh, we tried a lot of different things. Everything we had at Sabatini's, um, no complaints, very good. Now let's talk about Love by Brito. We did do this at $79 per person. It is additional, and it's not part of the Premier package, so you have to pay. Even if you have the Premier package, you got to pay the full $79 per person. It's the highest place at the back of the ship, and the the windows just open up to the ocean. It is one of the most beautiful views you're ever going to have. Uh, just, just a really amazing view. Very romantic. Once you're seated, it's very romantic. It's kind of a love theme. Everything has little hearts on it. We thought the food was good. It's uh, small portions, very small portions. Every The presentation was over the top, and it was really nicely done. Great service. We had a great waitress and uh, just just really well done. So if you don't mind spending the money, we highly recommend Love by Brito. I think it's one of the nicest experiences uh, that we've done on a cruise. I mean, it was really, it, it stood out as something very special. We also did the Spellbound experience. Some of you may have heard of Spellbound. This is something unique to Sun Princess right now. I think they'll probably have it on Star Princess as well. And this is a combination dinner and then a magic show. And it was, again, one of the best things we did. Now, it's not cheap. It's $150 a person. It was expensive. But I think Ricky and I both agreed that it was well worth it. It was good dinner, very good dinner. I wouldn't say it's the best meal we had on board the ship, but it was good. And very good, excellent service, wonderful shrimp cocktail. Has kind of a set menu. It's a very limited menu. Uh, I had the steak. The food was very good. And then after dinner, they lead everybody, escort everybody over to the spellbound, kind of a lounge. It's a private, dark, mysterious kind of place. And uh, this is where they'll do some up-close uh, magic. Right there at the bar, we sat at the bar, and we got a super magician. This young lady did some really cool card tricks and other things right in front of you. So, you, you know, and, and yet she was so good. This is all in kind of in conjunction with Magic Castle. They have kind of an agreement. And then uh, you can you can stay there as long as you want and enjoy complimentary car. All the cocktails are included, and they have some of the best cocktails on the ship. This place has some really good, creative, interesting drinks. I highly recommend Spellbound. If you can afford it, do it. It's it's a once in a lifetime, you might say, experience. Very nice. And then you after you've done the close up mag magic, had a little drink there in the lounge. You then, everybody goes back to a small theater, and they do a, oh, maybe a 30-minute magic show. God was very good. So, highly recommend uh, Spellbound. 
The next thing we did, another expensive meal, $150 per person, $149 was the chef's table. As soon as we got on board, we made sure we got on the list to be included in one of the chef's table dinners. We figured they'd do several on a transatlantic, and I think they did. Is it worth $150? I don't know. Uh, we've done other chef's tables for about $100 that were comparable as far as quality. But I gotta say, it was a great experience. It's not part of the premier package, neither is Spellbound. So you still have to pay for this, even if you have the Premier Package. I'm glad we did it. I, I, At the time, I thought, wow, $300 for two people to have dinner is going to have to be pretty damn special. And turns out it was. It includes all your wines. They have wine pairing with dinners. And it was just very, very over-the-top presentation. Now, you meet in the uh, Kai Sushi uh, for like a glass of champagne before, and then they lead you back. First, you go down to the galley. You get a chance to do a very quick, very abbreviated galley, galley tour where you meet the executive chef. And then they take you up to the dining room. And the area for the chef's table is kind of in the back of, of the Horizons dining room. They have kind of a curtained off area. So you're segregated from the uh, everybody else in the dining room. It was... Beautiful, beautiful table settings. Service was over the top, perfect. Uh, great sommelier came out and explained all the wines. The chef came out with every course and explained the different courses. There were many different courses. And it was, it's an evening. I mean, it's something you're going to do. You're going to spend the evening enjoying a meal. And it was... Uh, like I say, it was it was memorable. It was that good. It was very, very good. Again, if you don't mind spending the money, if you're a foodie for sure, you definitely want to get on the list and do it as soon as you get on board. Go to guest services or call the dining number. Get on the waiting list for the chef's table. It was very, very good. So let's talk about The Catch by Chef Rudy. Rudy Soderman, who is the consulting chef for Princess, has his own restaurant, kind of a seafood-themed restaurant. And we went there the second night. Menu is very nice. They have a lot of different options on the menu. Service, by the way, service was excellent. Uh, very good service. And the food was good. Uh, we no no complaints at all with the food. Great shrimp cocktail. Same shrimp cocktail they serve down at Spellbound, by the way. Probably the best shrimp cocktail I've ever had on a cruise. To be honest with you. The downside for us on this cruise, and this is going to change. It's already changed, and that was the atmosphere. It was at the back of the eatery. They take the aft section of the eatery and closed off half of it for the catch by Rudy. What, uh, it's like you're eating in a cafeteria. It just didn't live up to the food and the service. And I'm sure they know this, and that's why they're changing it. They're moving these restaurants to their own venues now, and I'm glad they are. I wish, I wish we could have reported to you what it was like after the change. Because atmosphere makes a difference. It just does. I mean, it makes a difference in how you enjoy your meal. Let me know in the comments down below, is that your opinion of the catch by Rudy? Now, the other dining experience, a lot of people have asked about room service. We did not do room service because there was no table in our room where you could sit down and really eat. Uh, I don't know why in a cabana mini suite, they didn't, they have plenty of room there for a table, but there is no table. But we did try the Ocean Now service a couple of different times, actually three different times. And what this is, is with your medallion, they know where you are on the ship, or at least that's the idea. And you use the app and you have a menu where you can order things and you can have those, those food items or drinks delivered to you anywhere on the ship. So a couple of times we were at Bellini's having a cocktail 
Maybe we didn't want to go to dinner that night. Rather than going to dinner, we just ordered some appetizers, a cheese plate, and some hummus and, and you know, uh, dips and things like that, crudite. And, you know, the idea is you order it on the app and then they find you because you've got your medallion. They know where you are. We were stunned at how well it worked. It was, it took less than 10 minutes to get the food. And I'm talking three different times. We did it one time up in the Cascade Bar up on deck uh, 17 behind the dome. And we did it twice at Bellini's. And it, it was shocking. It was faster for us to get our food through this Ocean Now service than it was to get a drink from the bar at Bellini's. That's how fast it was. I mean, literally, it took less than 10 minutes for them to get there. And everything that we, they brought us was good. I mean, the food was good. This would be the same service you would get if you had room service. Now, you normally have to pay for this, but since you have the Premier package, it was all included. And I think if uh, you don't have the Premier package, and I'm sorry, I'm not talking about the Plus, Princess Plus, because we didn't have Princess Plus, so I don't really know what their price structures are. If you have Premier package, the Ocean Now is all included, and that's same as your room service, same thing. The only other thing I'm going to talk about is the Platinum and the Elite Lounge. On our cruise, this was kind of a throw together thing, and in my opinion, and normally, well, at least on Discovery Princess, they had a, a bar right next to the casino, and they turned that into the uh, premium, uh, Platinum and Elite Lounge in the evenings for just an hour or two. And they have hors d'oeuvres, and they have uh, canapes and drinks, and it's a great idea. It's a great concept. The problem is on Sun Princess during our cruise, they did it. And I don't know if they do this on every cruise. Maybe it's because we had so many people on this cruise that were elite. But they did it at the Horizons dining room. They closed off a part of the dining room. So once again, it's like you're sitting down at a, at a, at a caf cafeteria table to, to enjoy a drink. Drink service was very slow because there's really not a bar there. It's not a bar. It's a restaurant that's kind of been closed down just to have this. They did set up a little buffet. I don't know. It just it's, it felt like an afterthought. I only went one time because it was it was kind of depressing. It was kind of depressing. So um, I think they need to improve that. They need to have a separate space to do that in. Uh, even the dome would have probably been better. I don't know, but it, that only holds 250 people. So I don't know if that would have worked either. Anyway, that is my review of the food and dining on Sun Princess. I'm sure I've left some things out. Again, I want to invite you. Please put your comments in down below. Overall, I would say the food and dining was good, but we ate a lot of specialty dining. We're really into the specialty dining, and I thought overall their specialty dining was quite good. And for that reason, I think the Premier package is probably a good value, because we go on Princess, we would probably eat specialty dining every night or almost every night. We're just not big fans of MDR or buffets. But anyway, please let us know in the comments down below if you have any questions or what your thoughts are. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor, please give it a thumbs up. And I will see you on the next cruise report. And until I do, smooth sailing.